Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. My name is Bobby, I'm a 3D artist at Chaos and in this episode I will show you how to expose your interior scene properly after which we'll take a look at some important material properties to increase the realism of your assets. In the previous episode I showed you how you can add the finishing touches to your render with the help of the V-Ray frame buffer. Before we start today's tutorial, I want to highlight that you can find the scene we are working on for download in the description below, together with the scene assets. You can go ahead and grab them for free, so you can practice at your own pace. When it comes to natural lighting and interior, we have to think about what light sources affect our scene. In our case, we have the sun and the environment. The next question we have to ask ourselves is how do those light sources reach the interior? In this particular house, we have a lot of windows, which means that there's a lot of openings from where the sun and the environment light can pass through. Let's start an interactive render to visualize the state of our interior lighting. You may notice that our image is pretty dark for a midday scenario. This means that the light coming from our sun and environment is not enough, so we can increase the sun intensity. But by doing that, we're just increasing the sunlight and we don't get any of the environment light coming through. To get more environmental lighting coming from our windows, we need to create a dome light. This specific light source works adaptive to the openings, which means that more environmental lighting is forced to come through the windows. For a more accurate result, you have to use the production rendering mode. That's because we can use light cache as a prepass. This is a technique for approximating the global illumination in your scene. We'll cover light cache in more detail in future episodes. All we need to do now is go into the render settings and under environment we can find the background. Let's copy the texture from the background and disable it from here. Then we have to paste it into the texture slot of the dome light. This does not break the sun and sky system connection, allowing the sun to still interact with the environment, carrying its color and intensity. Now when we increase the intensity of the dome light, you can start seeing more environmental lighting in our scene. With a properly exposed scene, I would like to show you how to edit some interesting material properties that will enhance the realism of your assets. Let's go closer to the pillow on the couch to demonstrate the sheen effect. In the real world, most cloth materials have a falloff effect. What this means is that their reflectivity is based on the view of your camera. To achieve this effect, the viewer materials have a property called sheen. To open this property, we have to navigate to the advanced setting button here, where you can see more specific parameters. Based on the sheen color, we can control the coverage and color of the soft shine effect. The sheen glossiness is responsible for the intensity of the shine. This parameter is designed specifically for creating cloth-like materials. Next, let's look at the code parameter. This option helps us with the creation of coated surfaces, things like metals or very shiny plastic materials. Think of this as the top reflective layer on a material. To demonstrate the effect, we'll use this coffee jug. Let's use the render region tool so we can render only the jug. The coat parameters are pretty straightforward. The coat amount is responsible for the amount of coating and the coat color allows you to add a color to your coat. One interesting property is the IOR or index of refraction parameter. By increasing it, you start getting a chrome effect, which I think looks much better than the original metal one. The last important material I would like to demonstrate is the two-sided material. This material is used for objects with translucent properties, like leaves, cloths and paper. You can find the material by going into the material tab. To show the effect of the material, I will use this orchid. As you may notice, the orchid looks very plastic and lifeless. This is because there is no light passing through its petals. To achieve this effect, we'll use the two-sided material. Let's assign the material of the petals to the front part of the two-sided material. If you have a material for the back side of the petal or leaf, you can use that as well. If you don't have one, you can leave it empty. All we need to do now is move the transparency slider to achieve a natural look. Great job! It looks pretty nice now, don't you think? In this tutorial, I showed you how you can recreate realistic everyday materials in a few easy steps. In the next episode, I will go over different camera parameters and settings to improve the quality of your images. I hope you found this information useful and you'll use some of these tips to create your own realistic materials. Thank you for being part of the V-Ray experience. Thank you.